Hi, little Louise. Linus and I are here to read you a book to wish you a happy winter solstice. The book is called The Shortest Day. So the shortest day came. And the year died. And everywhere, down the centuries of the snow white world, came people singing, dancing to drive the dark away. They lighted candles in the winter trees. They hung their homes with evergreens. They burned beseeching fires all night long to keep the year alive. And when the new year's sunshine blazed awake, they shouted, reveling. Through all the frosty ages, you can hear them echoing behind us. Listen. All the long echoes sing the same delight this shortest day as promise wakens in the sleeping land. They carol, feast, give thanks, and dearly love their friends and hope for peace. And so do we, here now, this year, and every year. Welcome, Yule. From the very beginning, our lives have been cyclical. At the solstices, the sun reaches its highest or lowest point in our sky, giving us the longest or the shortest day of the year. At the equinoxes, day and night are almost equal. Spring equinox, summer solstice, autumn equinox, winter solstice, round and round they go. If you live on a planet that circles the sun and your time is governed by patterns of light and darkness, summer and winter, warmth and cold, and of course, life and death. Once our forebears learned to farm, they planted and harvested at the equinoxes, but it was the solstices that caught their attention. The extremes. They watch their days shrink from the bright abundance of high summer to the bleak, dark cold of winter. And they invented rituals to make sure that light would come back again, to bring new day, the new year, and the rebirth of life. The rebirth rituals have become traditions that we still celebrate, whether or not we remember where they came from. Some of them are so old that only monuments remain. On the morning of winter solstice at the Great Earthwork New Grange in County Meath, Ireland, the day's first beam of sunlight shines through a passage that Neolithic people built there 5,000 years ago to catch it. And for 17 minutes, a dark room deep within is filled with the sunshine of the shortest day. It's a universal impulse, this celebration of light, as a symbol of continuing life. The Yule and Evergreens of my poem come from Northern Europe, but the candles in those Christmas trees belong to the same family as the menorah candles of Hanukkah or the oil lamps of Diwali. Christianity and many other faiths share their intention. They are lights of hope, reaching for the triumph of good over evil. The shortest day is for everyone. I wrote the poem for the theater for a joyful celebration of the winter solstice in music, dance, and words that's known as Christmas Revels. You can find out about it at www.revels.org. Every year on Revels stage in the nine cities across America, an actor steps forward and begins quietly, so the shortest day came. And everybody listening is reminded that above all, they too, at this time of celebration, feast, give thanks, and dearly love their friends and hope for peace. 
So when the actor reaches the last line, the whole audience repeats after him or her in great exuberant shout, Welcome Yule! The jack of my dedication is the singer-director John Langstaff, who founded the Rebels. Its seed was sown in his childhood when his family always had a big Christmas party for their friends. Their house was full of candlelight and good food and evergreens, and everyone sang carols or played music or recited a poem. When your family and friends celebrate Christmas in their own way, maybe you could astonish them by all standing up and reciting the shortest day. Jack would have liked that. And the family suddenly will be very large indeed.